Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I am sharing with you, uh, hopefully this was a tutorial that will inspire you, master board into junk journal elements. This will be the challenge inside the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. So follow along, see what I'm making, then use this tutorial to make your own and then share photos in the event inside the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Do check the description box below for links to the group as well as any of the items that I share today as well as my social media connectors. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Do leave a comment what you thought about this project or if you have any questions. All right, let's get started. So I am using up scraps of papers and this is a great project if you have a bunch of themed scraps or even random scraps. I've done a couple of live streams that show how different ways these pieces of paper can come together. It's a lot like the Franken page concept in that what I'm doing today is I am covering up another sheet of paper with a bunch of scraps. So let's get started. The first thing I do is I've got a little pot here that has a little bit of some Aline's tacky glue. It's kind of runny. What I do is when I refill my smaller bottle, which makes it manageable to use, I will take the big bottles and pour them all into this smaller bottle here and add some water to get that glue to transfer. And so I don't know if you can see that. Let me move it up this way so you can see it. It's really drippy. It's really wet. And this just helps me to lay down the papers and get them well adhered. I don't use Mod Podge. I don't like Mod Podge. I don't like that it's sticky. I don't like that it turns yellow. And it's not anything that I want to use in my journals. If you love it, by all means use it. If there's another product that you have, a white glue, a PVA glue, this will work as well. So the first thing that I do is I've got my glue ready and then I've got a bunch of papers here. This is just a dictionary page. And what I wanna do is I am working on a journal project that I want to use some pinks and maybe some blue so I'm looking at this piece and what I'll do is kind of come in here and make a patchwork with all these pieces some of these are digital prints some of them are just papers that were painted or they may have been stamped upon whatever the reason like this is a printed page painted paper gel print so let me grab a few of these and we'll get started. So I'll kind of play around with placement to figure out what I want where. And it doesn't matter really because we are going to cut this up. So I've got a gel print, gel print, paper that I painted. This is a printed piece of paper. This was a piece of paper that got wet, but I thought it might look interesting in here. Another gel print, another scrap of a gel print. All right, so I try to look at this and see which way I want to get started. Now, if you're doing random shapes, just paste them down any old way that you like. I like to try to not overlap too much so it doesn't give too much of a thick paper when we're using these. So I'm going to start in this corner here, and I'll take this piece and lay down some glue in the corner here. I'm using a one inch paintbrush, and what I do when I'm done gluing is I put that in some water and that washes out the glue. That's a good thing about Aline's Tacky Glue is it does clean up with some water. And then I'll use my bone folder to kind of smooth that out just a little bit. And then I'm going to go right below that and start adding some pieces. And I think what I want to do is I want this to line up here. So I'm just going to add some glue. Now you can see I'm just laying the pieces down. I usually flip it over to the back side and then gently use my bone folder to kind of help spread that glue around. Put my paintbrush in my water, close up my glue, and now what I want to do is trim off the excess paper all the way around. 
All right, so it does create a few scraps when you get done, but that's okay. I've got a bin over here to the side that I'm putting them all in so I can use them later on. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. The next thing I wanna do is I want this to be dry. So I'm gonna use my heat tool to dry it a little bit and then we're gonna go on to the next step. All right, so that's pretty much dry for the next step. I don't need it completely dry, but I want it dry enough that it's not uh, too wet that the ink won't transfer. Whenever you're stamping, if you're noticing that your ink isn't transferring, there's a couple of reasons why. You need to re-ink your stamp pad or your paper is wet or you're not letting your stamp rest on the paper long enough for the ink to transfer. I've got a few stamps here from Beeline Designs and I think I have a couple of my stamps as well. So what I like to do is stamp in the background. Now you can, if you want, take these scraps before you turn it into this master board and stamp on those or stencil on those. And then when you put it on here, it just gives it one more layer on top here. But we're gonna go ahead and work with what we have. So the first thing I've got is this is the three leaves, I believe is what it's called. And I wanna stamp it just kind of randomly around my newly formed page. All right, so we got a few of those on there. I've got a butterfly. This is the, I think it's called butterfly medium. It could be butterfly large. I always get it wrong, but it's a butterfly. And it's one of the bigger ones. It measures about three inches wide. It may be 2.75, something like that. And I wanna stamp it going in different directions because you never know. You may end up using this as a pocket. You may end up using it as a tag or a journal card, and if you give it an opportunity to be uh, stamped in different directions, then it kind of makes it fun for the randomness of it. All right, so I'm just kind of filling in. So there's the butterfly. I have a little flower here. This is from the Sunkissed Cube. It's a bunch of different flowers, so I'm gonna come in here and just add it in a couple places. Okay, I like that. Let me grab some more stamps. I'll be right back. I have the Dog Rose stamp. This is one of my stamps. So I think it would be kind of pretty to place in here in a few places. And then I have the Beach Rose Small or Small Beach Rose. I think if you just type Beach Rose, you'll find it. I like just kind of filling in wherever I can. All right, so I need this ink to be dry before I do my next step. So I'm gonna hit it with my heat tool so it'll be dry. All right, so I think for the most part it's dry. I'm feeling it with my hands. If there's any wet glue on here, you want to make sure that that's dry. I'm noticing that this didn't get glued down all the way. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue underneath. Sometimes you miss a spot, that's okay. Just kind of checking it out. All right, so now that that's dry, I've got the 1912 stamp from Beeline Designs, and I have a Versamark stamp pad. Mine is dirty, so this technique is perfect if you have one that got dirty. I have one that's clean that I save for when I want to have nice, crisp uh, it, watermarks, but this is perfect for using as an embossing pad. You can use your favorite embossing ink as well. So I'm just gonna ink this up and then just stamp it going in different directions across the page. And I'm okay if it overlaps, it's no big deal. And then the next thing I have is the Corner Roses stamp that's in my shop. Beeline Design stamps are in my shop as well. I'm the exclusive distributor for Beeline Design. Uh, they don't have a shop right now with an online presence that is selling their stamps so I'm selling them you're probably going what are you doing well now I'm getting it ready but I've got embossing ink all over it I've got some gold embossing powder this is a fine gold embossing powder and what I'm going to do is sprinkle that over this whole page 
All right, so I'll tap off any excess, close my embossing powder con uh, container so that I don't blow it around, and we're gonna use a heat tool to heat the embossing powder. You'll know the embossing powder is done when it turns shiny in this case. Whenever you're using embossing powder, you don't want to breathe in the fumes. I don't care what brand it is. If you're going to do a lot of embossing, I do recommend that you wear a breathing mask to protect your airway. I usually kind of sit back a little bit when I'm, I'm filming anyway, so that I'm not with my face right over those fumes. So I'm just going to work on this for a minute or two while we emboss this. there it is embossed if you notice after you're done that it looks like some spots were missed like this doesn't have a lot in it so i'll grab let's do the number the 1912 one and we'll stamp it across here and we'll put some more powder in that spot i do recommend that after you use a versamark ink that you take a moment to clean your stamps because it can leave a residue on there and make it messy when you go to stamp the next time. All right, so now we've got this piece all ready to go. Let's make something out of it. I think what I want to do is I've already made some journal cards and I've made some tags or bookmarks. So maybe we need to turn this into some pockets. So I'm going to get out my paper trimmer. I know that my pages are generally eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper folded in half. So it'll be eight and a half tall and five and a half wide. So my pockets, I want to be just inside probably five and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to line this up at the five. I'll just go ahead to five inches mark. And I'll cut it. And I think I want my pocket piece to be about two and a half inches tall. So now I've got this piece that can become a pocket. We'll do some more embellishment to that. And then I've got this piece that I think what I want to do is cut it. Let's see here. If I were to fold this down, let's make this kind of a diagonal pocket. So I'm just using where I folded it here. I'll make it easier to see. I'm just putting some distress inks on that fold so I can see it and I'll line it up with my cutter I'm just gonna line it up here corner to corner and cut this off and now I've got a tuck spot pocket so we can glue down here and here and here and put things in and then I've got this little corner piece that we could also use as a pocket all right so we still have this piece left how about a belly band? So if I made it about, oh, an inch and a half wide, that'll be good. And maybe we'll make a couple of journal cards. So how tall are these? These are going to be roughly five and three quarters of an inch. So maybe if we did a three inch, And then let's see what this one is, and we'll maybe we'll just cut it in half. So six inches, so three inches. So I've got all these pieces now. So the next thing I want to do is add some distress inks to all the edges. And then I want to contemplate, do I want to back these with another piece of paper? Or do I want to take it to the sewing machine and add some stitches? So we'll do some distress inks first. I have some scrapbook card stock that I I don't know if it was given to me or if I put, picked it up when it was really cheap on sale. But I've been cutting it up because it's white or ivory on the other side. And that gives us a nice writing space. And it also gives us a kind of a unique look on this side. So how much do I have left here? I have seven inches. I think what I'll do is cut it. To be for our journal cards which were three inches wide so if I go three and a half inches wide 
that gives us a nice little border. And I'll cut them at six inches. I may end up trimming them down some. Because these should all be the same size. So we put that on top. We get a little bit of a border. I could probably get away with making this a little bit narrower, so I'm going to trim it down. And then I've got this piece left, so let's trim this down to be five and a quarter inches. So now I've got this piece. And I think for this one, let's do this. I'm going to take this piece. It is five inches wide. So if we go to five and a quarter, that works. And I want a strip for this. So I'm going to cut it at one and three quarters. Yeah, one and three quarters wide. And then let's make this eight and a half inches tall. And what I'll do is I'll cut this down to be eight and a quarter inches. So when we lay this on top, we get a little border all the way around. All right, so I don't need these pieces. And again, it may create a few scraps. I just take those and drop them into my scrap bin. All right, so I want to use this piece. And I think what I'll do is cut it or after I glue it. So I'm going to glue this down match it up here in the corner and I will trim this to be about a quarter of an inch across here yep that looks good and then this piece I want to glue down where I just cut it and then we'll just trim off this bottom portion and we've got another scrap we can use later. All right, let's glue all these pieces together. So that's going to be a pocket, tuck spot. This is going to be a belly band. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine in a moment and stitch all these together. Okay, so I've got all of these adhered together. And we're going to start with the first ones I glued because basically I want the glue dry before I go to the sewing machine. I'm using an electronic sewing machine. It is set up to do a zigzag stitch. I've got regular thread, a regular needle in it. I do recommend that you use new thread whenever you're sewing because there's nothing more frustrating than to have thread breaks. And if you have old thread, that will happen. You want to make sure that there's not any glue that is wet that you'll be sewing through because it can go down into your machine. So just make sure your paper is dry before you start sewing. And I'll just line this up where I want to start stitching and stitch down the edge. And then when I get to the end, I will leave my needle down and raise the presser foot and then swing my paper around and start sewing again. So there's the corner piece. Here's the other portion of the corner piece. All right, so we've got all of our pieces sewn and they're ready to go for the next step, which I am trying to decide what I want to put on top. Now, you know, you can leave these just the way they are until you're ready to finish decorating them or you can go ahead and finalize your decorations. So I'm going to go ahead and go around the edges with some distress ink and finish off that portion anyway. This is a, one of these projects again using up your scraps since I used embossing powder. How many of y'all have embossing powder that you haven't used in a long time? We'll get it out and use it. All right, let me grab some supplies that we can use to add to these. I've picked out a few things. These are some butterflies from Norella of Calico Collage. I can't remember if this is the actual pink butterfly collection or if this was part of the Victorian Rose collection. And this is a Tim Holtz, and then I've got some stamped images as well as some of Norella's word images. So 
I'm just going to make this really simple and just glue down these images. Now, if you want to add extra doodads like lace and you want to add some eyelash trim, you can do that. You can layer more papers if you want to have little frames around your words. I just want to show you just a quick way to come in here, especially with already printed items, and create your own little journal cards and pockets. I hope you like this tutorial that it gives you some ideas of what to do with those scraps of paper that you have, that you can take those and cut them up more if you want, and then start collaging them together to make a base page that you can then cut up or a master board that you can cut up. We're going to color this little rose, so I'll, I'll glue it down so it can be drying, and then we'll come back and color it. And that's the Bella Rose uh, Medium. And then on, let me get this so you can see it, this uh, belly band, I thought I would just use this image from Calico Collage. And sometimes I'll put Tulip Dimensional Glitter Paint on the images. I like, though, that shimmer looks. So I'll always add just a little bit here and there. And we'll just kind of position this on here. And then I've got the word dream big. All right, so we've got those. And let's glue these pieces. If you want more ideas on master boards, I had a live stream on April the 25th where I showed how to make a master board and turned them into one was a journal card and the other was into bookmarks. And then on May the 2nd, I did some more master cards and made journal cards and pockets. All right, so on this little rose, I'm just going to use some watercolor pencil and then just really quickly scribble in some color. And let me grab a, another color, kind of a red. And then I'll come with my watercolor brush. Hey, I like that. Clean my brush off. Well, let's do the leaves real fast. So there are some journal cards that I made. So there's three journal cards. And then we made a pocket. Then we made a diagonal pocket. So a corner pocket. I made a rectangular pocket. And then we've got a belly band that can be used to hold a journal card in our journal. Well, I hope you like these ideas that I've shared with you today. Please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Head over to the Friendly Giant Journal People Facebook group. Show us a picture of your master board, then cut it up and make it into something and show us a picture of what you made. And hey, if you got a video that you want to share, we'd love to see that as well. I will be picking a random winner to get a $10 gift card to my shop for those that participate. All right, everybody, y'all have fun creating your own master board and turning that into junk journal elements. Have a fun day, everybody. Bye.